Hello again. We're doing compound inequalities. And by compound inequalities, I mean and or or statement inequalities. And with that said, if you're trying to solve for x, and x is sandwiched in the middle of two inequality signs, that's an and statement. That's how you, de that's how you decipher if something is an and statement. Uh, in order for something to be an or statement, it has to have an or. And that's usually just given. So we don't really have to worry about that. But we, what we do have to worry about is trying to solve for x here. Now, there are a couple ways to think about this. You can treat this like two inequalities, which I will show you momentarily. Or you can just treat this as one whole, you know, mystifying problem. Okay, very good. I want to solve for x here. Uh, it's actually like solving for two problems at the same time. You have to solve for x on this inequality. Negative 5 is less than or equal to negative x minus 3. And, that's why you have the and. You have to solve for this one. Negative x minus 3 is less than 2. And because that's, the, um, because that's what we're doing, we have to kind of do this slightly different than we're used to doing. Although, actually, theoretically speaking, we do it exactly the same way. And that's my second way. I'm going to show you how to do it. But uh, either way works for students. So I'm going to add 3 to get rid of this 3. Negative 3. But what I do on one side of the inequality, I have to do on the other. But it's not like a two-sided seesaw. It's actually like a three-sided seesaw now. You've got to keep it balanced in the middle, on the left, and on the right. So you add 3 here, you add 3 there, and you add 3 there. So what you're left with is negative 2 is less than or equal to negative x less than 5. Not done. We still have to get x by itself. That's not actually negative x, it's negative 1x. And in order to get rid of negative 1 times x, you have to divide by negative 1. But what you do in the middle of a and or a compound inequality with an and, you have to do on the left, and you have to do on the right. So negative 2 divided by negative 1 is a 2. But before you go any further, because you divided or multiplied by a negative, what do you have to do here? Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is x. 5 divided by negative 1, negative 5. Uh, let me rewrite this now so it makes a little bit more sense, you know, hypothetically speaking. x is greater than negative 5 and less than or equal to 2. Now that's not usually the way we graphed it. Uh, I'll show you how we graphed it momentarily, but let me finish. Here's negative 5. Here's 2. 2 has a closed circle on it. Negative 5 has an open circle on it. And x is in the middle. I need this and this, I need this and this. You know, an and problem is like, I need this and this. When people say they want something and something, they kind of go like this. So your answer is always going to be shaded in the middle of, you know, two points, two hands. My attempt at a joke. Probably didn't work out too well. Uh, let me show you the other way to do it so it makes sense compared to how we've done it before. But this is right. I'm going to come up with the exact same answer, doing it a different way. I'm going to treat this like two different problems. I'm going to make this negative x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5, still greater than or equal to negative 5, and three is less than 2. So I'm going to write them as two separate problems. Although you could do this or you could do this, it doesn't matter. Whichever way is easier for you, that's the way you do it. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x on both of them. Add 3 to both sides, divide by negative 1. X is less than or equal to negative 2. Oops, I knew that was wrong. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. I can't edit it now, I'm so far into it. Pardon me, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. I knew I forgot a step there, pardon me. So x is less than or equal to 2. My mistake. 
usually don't make them too often, but that time I did, and I'll admit I did. Next one, add three to both sides. Is less than five. Divide by negative one to get rid of that negative in front of the x. And the x is greater than negative five. And if you want to plot both of these at the same time, which is what you're supposed to do, here's two, here's negative five, open circle, closed circle, it's less than two, and at the same time, it's greater than five. So it's less than two, and at the same time, greater than five. <gasps> it's exactly the same thing. You know, like I said, I need this and this, I, I need this and this, I need this and this. Uh, yeah, when you're saying that, you always need it in the middle. Let's do an or problem. Now an or problem is already set up as two different problems. So you don't have to set it up as two different problems if you want to. In an and problem, you can go either way. You can solve this way as one, or you can split it into two. And I have a lot of students who actually like the splitting into two, because they say even though it's a little longer, it's easier for them to do. And hey, if you're going to get the problem right, do it any way you want. So I'm going to solve. Two x is less than six, divide by two. x is less than 3. Next one. Good catch. 3x minus 6 is greater than 12. Add 6 to both sides. Three x is greater than 18. I added 6 to both sides. 12 plus 6 is 18. Divide by 3. x is greater than 6. Now with an OR problem, it's a little bit different. Here's your number line. Here's 3. Here's 6. They're both open circles because there's no line underneath the inequalities. But with an OR problem, this one's going to be less than, the arrow's pointing that way, and this one's going to be greater than, the arrow's going to point the other way. And you're going to get something like that. And that's exactly what you're supposed to get. If you don't get this for an or, later on when you do more difficult problems, if you don't get to say, I can go this way or this way, then it's going to be wrong. And that's when we're going to work with inequalities and absolute values at the same time, which is really quite fascinating. But an OR problem, uh, when you graph it on a number line, is this way or this way. An AND problem, when you graph it on a number line, is this way or this way. And if you don't get this on an AND problem or this on an OR problem, when you're using uh, absolute value and inequalities, which is uh, much further on, but nonetheless still important to mention, then you know it's an undefined answer, an all-real solution answer. It, it's, it's, it's a speculative answer. It's not a normal answer. Um, I don't want to go too far into that. When the time comes, we'll end up doing that. But with that said, we're done for right now. Have a great day. Goodbye.